Hey, my name is Jackson Dart and you are watching Like a Farmer. Hey y'all, it's Pat with Like a Farmer. Welcome to the season finale of season one. I wanna thank the Illig family for letting me do the last episode here at Maple Ranch. Maple Ranch, one of the best ranches in the country. We're in the great state of Missouri. Brian and Mike Illig, can't thank y'all enough. And I wanna thank my guests for coming on the show today. Ole Miss QB, Jackson Dart. Jay Dart, thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Super excited for it. I wanna start off with uh, Utah, man. Kaysville, Utah. Tell me about it. Tell me where you're from. Yeah, Kaysville, uh, just north of Salt Lake City, about 30 minutes. Uh, moved there into junior high, and it's uh, where my family's at still to this day. Um, love the whole, my home state of Utah. Uh, there's just so much, you know, diverse country. Um, I think it's one of the most beautiful states in the country, and, uh, you know, there's nothing like home, and um, I love it and can't wait to return back, uh, you know, someday when I retire. Totally. Great athletes come from the state of Utah, too. That's right. I mean, what's your favorite athlete out of Utah? <sighs> Man, there's a lot. Um, I would say probably my favorite, um, as of right now, is probably Puka Nakua. Okay. Um, Puka, taking, I did not Taking know. the NFL by storm right now. He is, man. Yeah. We were all hanging out at the ranch last night watching some football. You can't beat this place, right? I mean, Maple oh, Ranch. Not at all. How I mean, good this was is that hunt? Incredible. Incredible. I mean, uh, these guys, their land is, is top tier. Everything they do here um, is top notch, and uh, we've been definitely blessed you know, and fortunate to be a part of it. Yeah, that's great. So going back to growing up, your family, family of athletes, right? That's right. I mean, Pops was an athlete. Yep. You've got some siblings that are, your mom was an athlete. Yep. You've got some siblings that are athletes. I mean, tell me about them. Yeah, um, I always joke around and say that my mom is the most athletic in the family. Uh, she was all state in three sports and track um, and uh, basketball and volleyball. So she's kind of the all around athlete. My dad uh, played football at the University of Utah. He was a safety there. Um, and then obviously I play at Ole Miss and then I got a little brother um, who's a freshman in high school at Corner Canyon who's going to be an absolute stud. So uh, definitely blessed to have, you know, those people around me and, and to help raise me. That's great, man. Family over everything. And just getting to know you these past couple of days, family means the world to you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are the people that support you and you're going to have your back through it all, um, through the good times and the bad. Uh, I think it says a lot with me being able to move out to Mississippi and them making the sacrifice to see me every single week at every game. Um, that you know is very important to them and um, shows true volumes of who they are as parents and family members to me. And um, I couldn't thank them enough. Everybody comes to the sit, man. Thanks for the let's go the new swag. Let's go. You look you good. I look merch? good. That's yeah. right. Um, so we've been the last couple of days, man. We've been hunting. We've been fishing. And that, those two things are a big part of your life, and I can't wait to talk about that. How, tell everybody about the hunt that we went on at Maple Ranch. Yeah, um, well, just to start off, uh, you know, I haven't been duck hunting um, until uh, probably last year when I first moved to Mississippi and kind of got introduced to some of my, by some of my offensive linemen, and it just really hooked me. You know, I couldn't wait for the season to come around and um, got this opportunity to come out to Maple Ranch with you. and and the Illick family, which was an incredible opportunity. Um, and I, man, I was blown away with today, you know, driving into the hole, um, you saw, you know, just, you were surrounded by ducks and, uh, you know, definitely gets, you know, your juices flowing and um, started off hot in the morning. Um, I've never been a part of a hunt like this with so yeah. much action and, uh, you know, just a great time with great people. And I think that is, you know, part of hunting and, and something that you can really appreciate. Um, had an eight man limit, limit and uh you know i was blown away yeah um, limit and out on the That's ducks right. that doesn't happen a lot great times hunting or fishing you do that a lot i mean which one are you choosing <sighs> man uh you know it's it's tough to because they're so different i feel like you know totally. um, in some ways they're they're similar but for me i would have said probably two years ago that fishing was my go-to um but i would have to say now with you know being more diverse in, in the field of hunting, of being able to hunt waterfowl and big game and small game. Um, you know, there's just so much you can do, and I, I fall in love with, with hunting um, and, and really have been a part of it my whole, my whole life. So I'd say at this point right now, I'd probably say hunting. That's awesome. What do you learn from hunting and fishing? 
I know we talk a lot about patience, right. but what do you learn from those two activities that kind of resonates with you on the football field? I think a big thing that really stands out to me is, is just being in the moment. Um, I think nowadays it's so easy to get caught up in the outside world and um, there's just so many things you can get involved into and, and football really keeps you where your feet are. Um, and I think hunting and fishing does the exact same thing. Um, I think that's something that has really taught me to, like you said, be patient and it correlates to the football field. Um, as a quarterback, you know, things aren't going to come um, just like this, you know, every single play yep. and whatnot. So um, and that's how it is hunting. You got to be patient. You never know what to expect and you got to be ready to make the play when the play's there. Um, but there's so many life lessons that you can learn. And, uh, you know, I've grown a lot from both of them. You've been doing it your whole life. That's right. I was doing some, I've got such a great team back home, my research team, and read some things about fishing, keeping you up past your curfew. Yeah. When you used to do some fishing. So you've been doing it your whole life. What's some of your favorite memories hunting and fishing that you've been on? Man, I've had countless memories. Um, I'd probably say one, I've, this one's a good story. So I was in Idaho with my pops um, on a mule deer hunt and you know, it was a rough few days. Um, you know, there was a lot of land to glass and we weren't really picking out a lot of, um, you know, shooter bucks and we we're, you know, saw a minimal amount of deer. And um, at times like that, it can get a little stressful, especially when you're in kind of a time crunch. And, uh, you know, it just so happened to be, um, you know, our last day, uh, you know, we were just glassing, kind of taking our last rounds on a ridge and um, spotted a, a good buck at 600. We didn't really know how big it was. Um, and my dad was like, cause I had never been with my dad when he's killed an animal yeah. before. Um, which was weird cause I felt like he'd always kill animals when I wasn't there. And then when I was there, it just didn't seem to happen. But, um, he knew it was, it was a buck and, uh, we didn't really know exactly how big it would be. Um, and he had his 300 ultra mag and the sun was glaring right into our eyes and he couldn't see him through the scope. So I had to shield it with my hat. And I forgot to put my earplugs in. Oh, what was he shooting? 300 Ultra. Oh, wow. And, you know, if anybody knows, that gun is loud. Yeah. Insanely loud. So um, this was like a 650-yard shot. So I'm shielding him off. Um, you know, I'm not doing it exactly the way he wants to, so it's getting stressful. And he's, uh, you know, the motions are flowing back and forth. And like I said, I completely forgot to put my earplugs in. And I remember when he pulled that trigger, like, the ring that I had in my ears was something that I've never experienced before because I was right next to it. Um, and, you know, with the sun, we couldn't tell if he had hit it or not. Yeah. Uh, so we had to, you know, make the trek to go see. Sure enough, he dropped it and smacked it right where he was standing. Um, and it turned out to be one of his, you know, biggest bucks that he's killed. And uh, I think that moment between a father and son uh, is definitely something that you'll never forget. Um, you know, we we're just hugging, you know, celebrating. Um, you know, I felt like people could hear us for miles with where we were at when we were celebrating, but that's definitely one that has stood out to me um, in my history of hunting. Uh, most recently, I had hunting and fishing experience where I was able to take two of my offensive linemen to Utah. And, there you go. Some yeah. little teammate bonding time. That's right. I mean, those guys, they're protecting your yeah. tail on the field, so you got to keep them happy. You got to keep them happy. That's right. Um, but, you know, they're my best friends, so, uh, you know, it was a great trip. We were able to all kill turkeys. Um, and that was my turkey that, that was my first turkey that I've ever killed. Um, and you know, we were also able to catch, you know, some awesome lake trout, um, you know, a trophy lake trout for me, I, it was a little over 60 pounds and just an absolute stud. Um, and then we were all able to kill turkeys and we were all able to do that in the span of two days. So, uh, you know, that, that was a memory that I'll, I'll never forget just being around my friends and, um, and yeah, it was just an incredible trip. That's awesome. Any cool uh, upcoming trips you got? Yeah, I'm actually, you know, after our bowl game, I'll be going to the Sonora Desert with my dad and my grandpa. There you go. Yep, in Mexico uh, and hunting mule deer. Um, you know, going to go try to kill a, a trophy and, and uh, you know, make another great memory. That'll be fun. Have you ever been to Mexico? I mean, I've been to like Cancun, Cancun yeah. and Cabo, but there you go. <laughs> never the Sonora. I've always been close to the beach. That's awesome. So let's talk about sports, man. Uh, high school football, and yeah. there's been some studs come out of this high school. What was the high school that you Corner went Canyon. To? Okay, did you play both baseball and football there? So I went, the first high school I went to for my freshman and junior year was Roy High School. Okay. Um, a little 
about 20 minutes north of Kaysville in Roy, Utah. Yep. Um, and then I ended up transferring my senior year to Corner Canyon. Um, you know, give all the credit to Roy High School. You know, they're the ones who, who raised me and kind of molded me into the player that I was. Yeah. Um, you know, Coach Fernandez did a great job. And then my senior year, um, I was able to just let it, you know, my product display on the field and being a, an assistant that perfectly fitted my skill set with great players at Corner Canyon and Coach Kerr, who had us, who had us freaking rolling. I think we were like number six in the country my senior year. So, yeah. um, definitely a ton of talent that came out of that, out of that, both of those schools. Yeah. What Zach Wilson came out of? Yep, he was be right before me. What made you choose? Because you played both baseball and football. Like, at what point did you say, "Hey, I'm going to go all in on football"? Football has always been the one that stood out to me the most. Um, growing up, I would say it would have probably depended on the season of what was my favorite sport at the time. But getting into high school, football was definitely my favorite. Um, and quite honestly, high school was, was tough. Like the recruitment process was really tough for me. Um, at one point I even thought, I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to go play college baseball. Like that's the only time yeah. I'm gonna be able to get a scholarship. What position were you playing in baseball? I was a corner infielder. There you go. Yep. Hot corner on both sides. Love that, man. Love it. Uh, to this day, I miss it like crazy. I love baseball. Um, I think you're doing – I think you made the right choice. Yeah. You're doing not too bad. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, but I would say going into my senior year, um, you know, I just made the sacrifice that I was going to go all in on football. And, um, you know, whatever it took in the off season for me to, to develop my skill set, to try to get noticed – um, you know, try to have anybody take a shot on me was, was something that I was really chasing and um, got put in with a great group of private trainers in 3DQB and Taylor Kelly, Adam Dado, and John Beck over there um, in, in California. And I was able to surround myself with elite players. And I think that that really pushed me to, um, you know, be the player that I was because, yeah. you know, I was always, I was training with Bryce, I was training with CJ and those guys who, or five stars and some of the best in the country. And, you know, that's what I looked up to. Um, and then going into my senior season, uh, it got shut down because of COVID. And I didn't have any offers. Um, my only offer was a gray shirt from BYU, which isn't really ideal to go into a college. Yeah. Right. So now uh, what does that mean? A gray so a gray shirt? shirt is basically like you have to pay tuition for your first year and then gotcha. you'll get on scholarship the next year I think that's kind of how it works okay um so it, it wasn't like an immediate like you get a full ride scholarship yeah right out of the gate um and during COVID there wasn't football there wasn't things going on so all the quarterbacks around the country just started committing to schools yeah so every school had a quarterback commit and um so I knew that whatever school that I was going to go to I was going to go into a class that had one or two quarterbacks in it with me and I was going to have to compete with um fortunately the state of utah started their season on schedule and nobody else in the country did it so i think by the time we got to like week four of my senior season uh the other states around had just gotten to week one yeah and um espn kind of caught notice you know there wasn't games and stuff going on there wasn't yeah. a lot of excitement because of covid yep. shutting things down and they took the chance to um, go to a high school game and I think from that moment forward you know everything in my life from the recruitment process and my future completely changed because yeah. of because of that you started balling out yeah Gatorade player of the year yes, sir. senior year right yes sir I remember that T-Law T-Law gave you the award right and yep. Lawrence give you the award yep that's freaking awesome man yeah I could do an my my research on on Jay Dart, you could just tell something happened that year, and it just kind of took you to the next level. And COVID's going on, right? So after your senior year, like, give me that process when you think about coaches coming in and recruiting you, and okay, where am I going to go? Let me do visits. Let me do this. Like, how tough was that during COVID? Well, I wasn't able to go on any visits. That's what I'm saying. Like, so so everything was virtual. So everything that we did was over Zoom calls. And I mean, that's I mean imagine how hard that is picking a school, especially if you're going to a school that's out of state and Correct. you've never to even seen ball. it in person. Yeah. Never met the coaches in person, yep. anything like that. So that was extremely difficult to make a decision. Plus my recruitment process coming so late into my senior year. Um, it just, you know, honestly, it was, it was 
pretty dang stressful because at the same time, I didn't think I was going to be getting a football scholarship. So I also had to try to prepare and graduate early within like the last however many months and take online classes so I could do that. Uh, so there was a lot of factors going on and it was stressful for me and my family because we had to make a decision so quickly. But uh, COVID definitely made things hard. And I mean, trying to make relationships with people yeah. over a Zoom call is, is um, unrealistic. Yeah. So you're doing the recruiting process and then my guy Jackson picks the bright lights of Los Angeles. Yeah. Going to USC. Tell me about that. Well, um, USC as a West Coast kid is yep. the prime destination for quarterbacks. Absolutely. I mean, look at the history that they've had, um, the Heisman winners that they've produced. Yep. Um, you know, that was, that was never a dream school of mine growing up. It was always the University of Utah. But I saw what they had put together in their history, and I know that the brand and everything that they had at that time was proven and something that, you know, if I bet on myself – um, you know, that I can make work. So I think a lot of that had to do with me going to, to USC. But, man, L.A. is, is a different animal. It's a man. beast, man. It is, absolutely. Yeah, there's always something going on in L.A., man. So we keep talking about Utah, and you're from Utah. And it, yeah. I mean, you've got the great university in Utah. Why not Utah? Why don't you go play there? Um, growing up, Utah was always my dream school. Yeah. Um, it was where my dad went. My mom transferred to the University of Utah as well, so they were both alums. Um, I mean, I had season tickets since I was a little kid, and uh, I'd always dreamed of playing in Rice Eccles. Um, I'll never remember. I'll always remember a phone call that I my dad got during the recruiting process, and um, they first discussed me playing defense instead of offense which to me was a little bit of a slap in the face. Yeah. Um, and it came like the Did you ever play D like in yeah. high school? Like growing up, growing up, my dad tried to have me yeah. be just like him, play safety. Yep. It just so happened that I was the best one who could throw the ball on my team. So yeah. um, he had me play both ways, but I, I loved both of them. Um, and then it was, really wasn't until like midway through my junior high that I was like, all right, like I'm a real quarterback. Yeah. So I've always had like that physical aspect of, you know, the game. And I think you can see that when I play, um, you know, I, I run the ball a lot and I kind of move differently than a lot of other quarterbacks do. Um, and my mom always gets on my butt about me not sliding and yeah. uh, that always. You Dude, you you remind me of somebody and it's, I'm trying to think who you remind me of. He wears number 17. He's from California. Oh, he plays yes. for the Buffalo Bills, man. J A seventeen, I can see it. I dog. mean you don't want to say dog. 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 Josh, dog. Dog. Jackson, dog. dog. Come on. Come on. Come on. But he doesn't slide. I yeah. mean, if he's got the ball, he's running over you, jumping over you. Right. Or he's already in the end zone before you even know he has the ball. I mean, so he he's not a slider either, so I respect the hustle. Yeah, I mean he's uh he's one of the most entertaining guys to watch in all football. Yeah. I mean, anytime the Bills are playing, everybody's going to take the extra time to watch Josh play and watch what he does. And he's definitely somebody that I've kind of wanted to model a lot of my game after Yeah. Um, because I see so many similarities of, of our play style. But going back, so, you know, I'm training to be a quarterback my whole life. Yep. Um, grinding with, you know, the extra work of, you know, finding private quarterback coaches and, and taking all that time. And I just remember, like, the feeling that I got of like it was somewhat disrespect to me because you know obviously my dad played DB there and he played on the defense side of the ball but you know having them you know not recognize my skill set at quarterback and and see it as you know a linebacker a safety um, was definitely that you know hit hard to me um, and definitely like bugged my parents a little bit because yeah. you know they wanted me to stay home of course so um, that was that was pretty tough, um, but you know I think that it all ended up playing for the better, and it definitely motivated me. Um, and you know I couldn't really look at them the same, especially once I got in the transfer portal. Yeah. After that, um, you know, as, as a school that I'd go to from our first interactions. Totally. My guy just wants the ball 24/7. I, I mean, I respect it. So you mentioned the portal that leads into the a great segment here. Yeah. So you get into the portal, and you, I'm sure, getting 
highly recruited and you decide to go to the SIP, which I the love, sip. man. Ole Miss, here I come. Tell me about that and why Ole Miss? Oh, I mean, there's a lot to love about Ole Miss. And was there, I mean, other people coming after you too when you entered the port before yeah, Ole yeah. Miss? Yeah. So the, it starts when, you know, we finish my freshman season. Um, our coaches got fired week two, and there really wasn't a lot of, what I, how do I say this? There wasn't a lot of positivity going around in the locker room and the yeah. coaching staff because um, you know, our head coaches got fired. Yep. You know, there wasn't a lot of future with their staff there. There wasn't a lot of future with the players there because of all the movement of the portal and, and whatnot. Um, and that was a pretty tough season, especially for USC, not being able to even go to a bowl game. And then I had some injuries which took, took me out of several games. Um, but then, you know, Lincoln Riley gets hired. Yep. And, you know, I'll, initially I was ecstatic. Like, all right, like I get to play under Lincoln Riley. Yeah. He's been, you know, great at OU and has done, you know, insane things Coach with Heisman, Heisman quarterbacks. Heisman. Yeah, correct. And so initially I'm, I'm juiced. Um, and then you see a lot of the, the rumors getting around of, of Caleb, you know, getting into the portal. And, um, you know, I didn't really know what, you know, that meant for yeah. me and, and my future there. Um, and, you know, I'd try to have conversations like, hey, like, what's your plan? Like, where do you see this going? Um, you know, just so I can make a decision for myself. Um, and, you know, because obviously Caleb was his guy. It was his guy that he recruited out of high school. It was his guy that he coached for Caleb's freshman year. And, you know, I'm not going to take away from anything like that because Caleb's an incredible player and um, the best player in college football. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, you could say Jaden. Jaden, I mean, Jaden was insane this year. Yo, Jaden was insane. But, I yeah. mean, no, I'm, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, Caleb, insane. You know, Caleb, dog. Caleb, Jaden, Caleb's dog. dog. I dogs. mean, there's, it, it's, it's hot right now in yeah. college football for the QBs. Yeah, so, you know, I didn't really know what my future was just going to be because I'd never had, you know, a previous relationship with Lincoln. Um, and there was a lot of beating around the bush in our conversations of, you know, what did you want? Like, what did you see me in your program um, versus, you know, what was going to actually happen? And I felt like it got to the point where, you know, there just wasn't enough like truth going into our conversations that I was like, all right, like I have to make, you know, the best move for myself. And um, I had recent uh, coaches from USC that got hired at Ole Miss. Yeah. And coaches that I, I loved when I was at USC. So that was initially like the first thing that, that caught my eye. Um, obviously the success and the excitement around the program of him having Matt Corral and them having the 10 win season going into the yep. Sugar Bowl. And there's just a lot of excitement going into the program. And uh, that's what caught my eye initially. Um, funny story is I remember when I first got into the portal, the day of, um, I kind of just set my phone down. I uh, didn't really know what to expect. And I just turned on the TV and I click on just a channel, just a random channel. And the very first show that turns on is The Blind Side. And yeah. um, at that time, I didn't think much of it. Um, but, you it's know. It's like a sign. It, it is. Yeah. You know, as you reflect on everything that the process brought to you, you, you remember moments like that. And, you know, it was just super, it was, you know, at that time, that was really cool to um, see how it comes full circle. But, you know. Um, got contacted by, you know, Ole Miss. Um, so when you say you got contacted by Ole Miss, I mean, does, yeah. does Coach Lane, Coach Kiffin just call you up and say, Dart, let's get to business? or like? I mean, it was the whole staff, Yeah. Um, you know, offensively and defensively. Um, I remember the first time I got on the phone with Coach Kiff, I was like, man, like, this dude is cool. Like, dog. He's, he's a dog, right? I mean, he's not like every other coach in college football. He's, not. he's he's his own he's his own breed of coach, and uh, I just thought it was super cool with how he carried himself, you know, the swag that he brought to the program and with himself, and uh, you know, it was something that I really wanted to you know further my um, experience and, and see what they had to offer by going on a visit there. Um, talked to University of Georgia and, and Coach Monken when he was the OC there, yeah. um, and then. Oklahoma with Coach Levy 
at that time and Coach Venables, and uh, and then BYU. You know, those were probably my top schools that that I had kind of narrowed my list down and then was able to check them out. Would have loved to have had you in Gainesville, man. I wish the Gators would have made that list, but. You know, what's interesting is Billy Napier was my very first offer at high school when he was at uh, Louisiana Lafayette. Wow. Yeah. Coach Billy. Utah to Louisiana. I that was a little too far for me. Dude's got an eye for talent, man. I don't know what to tell you. No, I love Billy. Billy yeah. was awesome. Tell me about, and we talked about it a little bit, I mean, Lane is a different animal, dude. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, I think he's one of the best coaches in college football, and he resonates with the, the players, too. I mean, golly, it's just, I love Lane Kiffin. I love Lane. Lane is my guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited <laughs> to have my new swag. Show, show, show what we got here. We got come to the sip. Come to the sip. Coach Shout Kiff, out. man, if you ever need me on the sideline, just give me a holler. I'll be there in a heartbeat. But tell me about Lane. Yeah, he is – a unique person he is you know you see all of his twitter um activity yeah and, um you know he's he's a troll on twitter which i love because it just you know it shows like his confidence yeah. and how he just likes to have fun yeah um and then when you get around him uh you know you talk ball and he's the smartest offensive mind that you've been around and the things that he can see um from just tape or you know pre-snap in a game and things like that is is really a special skill set that he's developed and has obviously allowed him to have an incredible amount of success at every level that he's coached. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of our conversations have nothing to do with football. And I think that that has made our relationship a lot tighter. And, uh, you know, he's he cracks me up, man. Like, there's just, like you said, there's nobody like him. And no. there's definitely not a funner person to, to play for than, than Lane Kiffin. I love that, man. I'm telling you. He's 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 the GOAT. He really is. Um, you've got a bowl game coming up. Yeah. Penn State in the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. I'm excited to be in the house watching you. I'm, I'm super pumped. Mercedes-Benz. I'll be in the Benz on December 30th. How pumped are you? And And, you know, You've got Penn State, who is really good at defense. You've got Ole Miss, who's got a firepower of an offense. Like, it's going to be a game. Like, I mean, tell me about it. Tell me, tell me how pumped you are. Well, I'm just jacked because we have a chance to make history and, you know, do something that Ole Miss has never done before. You know, it's, there's never been an 11-win season in school history. I did not know that. Yeah. So we get the opportunity to get to go into the wow. bins against the Nittany Lions and, and hash it out. Uh, Jay Dart, that's huge, man. I know it. So, I, you know, I'm excited to go try to make history and do something that's never done, been done before. Um, like you said, they're, they are one of the best defenses in college football. They're so physical, yeah. and, and what they bring to the table is, is just really hard to go up against. Um, but it's going to be a battle, and it's going to be like such a fun game to watch because – like you said, a great defense versus a great offense, and uh, you know we're it's going to be it's going to be a brawl and it's going to go all the way yeah. to the end. So I, I can't I can't wait for I'm it. Pumped to be there. You can't miss you on the field either, man. I mean that you've got the black paint on your right eye. What's that all about? Yeah, it's a little bit of a story. Started off uh, in high school, um, my very my freshman year. I I remember turning on the TV and watching LSU play and there was a defensive back for him. I can't remember who it was at that time, but he did it on both eyes. And I was like, oh, like, that's cool. Like, I've never seen somebody do it like that. Uh, sure enough, just kind of got the idea of like, all right, I'm a hunter, um, I'm a quarterback. My last name's Dart. My dominant eye is my right eye. I'm gonna put over my right eye because that's my shooting eye. And- uh, Love that. So started off doing that in high school. Um, people seemed to like it. And I was like, all right, like, this is going to be like my trademark. Like, I'm going to start doing it. A lot of people say, like, Aiden Hutchinson started it. Yeah. You can look at all of his posts. Look at my posts. You can see who did it first. That's all I got to say. I did it Ooh, first. Ooh, I, I like that. Because he does everything. Jay Dart too. with a hot take. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, kind of put it out there in, in college. And, uh, you know, it's fun when you're able to look out in the stands. You can see little kids and, and people have the eye paint and they put it on too. 100%, and, yeah. Um, see kids dress up. As on, on Halloween and do it, and uh, I just think it's unique and something that nobody's nobody's done. So uh, 
and that's kind of how it started. As I got more into it, I kind of attributed it to I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And okay. What's your favorite? I mean, there's like 20 of those movies. Which yeah. one are you going? Quite honestly, I'm going to have to say this is a hot take too. Okay. So I like the shows more than I like the original movies. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, which the movies are great. Yeah. You know, they're classics. TV show them. guy. Um, but I'm going to have to say like the Clone Wars uh, series is, is probably my favorite. Are you somebody that like celebrates May 4th like pretty hard? Yeah. May the 4th Absolutely. be with you, yeah. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've dressed up as a, as a Jedi or something for, for Halloween when I was a kid. So, you know, I've just, that's kind of been my thing. That's awesome. College football, man, nothing gets better. I mean, even stories like that, like you can't beat college football and what it is. You really can't. And we celebrated a lot. And, and you know, even starting this show like a farmer, it's to, it's to celebrate rural America educate people about who your farmers are, where your food comes from, hunting, fishing, conservation. Yeah. But how we get together as a country and as a family on Saturdays to watch college football, there's nothing better. I mean, that's kind of like, that's the mission of this show right here is to like, we've got to celebrate people. We have to educate people. And, and like that college football is something that brings people together. Absolutely. And, and that's why I thought you'd be a great addition to the show. And, um, and it's one, in my opinion, it's getting to be like the staple sport of rural America. I mean, it's super cool to, and Ole Miss, right? I mean, you think right. about Ole Miss is in the middle of rural America. Right. There's so much ag and farmers all around yeah. that. So it, it, it's, it's really cool to see that sport going to where it's at today. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the, the greatest sport on earth. It is. Another hot take. Come on now. No, I'm with you. 100%. Come on now. Yeah. It's the greatest sport on earth. It, like you said, it brings people together from different parts of the country. Um, you know, just the relationships that I made with my teammates where I'm a, I'm a kid from Utah and I'm playing with kids who are, you know, from Miami, Florida, um, from, you know, Midwest, you know, all around the country. Um, it totally just brings people together and the relationships that you make, you know, you wouldn't make without it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've fallen in love with, you know, the atmospheres you get to play in, you know, the hostile environments with, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, watching and, and yelling and booing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is the most thrilling, thrilling thing that you can be a part of. And, uh, you know, something that I, I never, I really never want to, I, I never want to leave. Everybody loves college football. Yep. Maybe not FSU fans right now. Yeah, that's true. Might be that's too tough. soon, but... Everybody loves college ouch. football. I know, ouch, sorry, fellow. I mean, I'm a Gator, so it's um, I had yeah. to maybe throw that dagger in. We actually, in my opinion, honestly, Jackson, I mean, we've got a great um, playoff this year. We really do. I, yeah, I agree. I think that there should have been two SEC teams in there. I think Georgia should have been there, too. I'm with you. I, I mean, in my opinion, I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. Like, Georgia and Alabama are the best two teams in the country, so... I agree with you 200%. I really do. Who do you like taking it all this year? I mean, you got to go Bama. Got to go Bama. They're, they're hot right now. Uh, Uncle Nick's tough to beat, man. Uncle Nick, man. I mean, there's nobody does like Uncle Nick. No. no. Uh, you know, I've played them twice. And, you know, my first year, we had them on the ropes. You know, that's a game that's going to forever haunt me. I know. Um, but, you know, they just find ways to win and, and just – unorthodox ways and they win in ways that aren't the same every single game they went on defense they went on an offense they went on a special teams play uh and they're so disciplined and, and coach Saban does an incredible job obviously uh but they're hot right now Jalen's playing good and you know I think they're going to go and beat Michigan and I think they're going to go win it all what, what I hope is I hope they play Texas again yeah it's going to be an Alabama Texas because rematch. everybody's like oh like you know Texas is better than them because they played them yeah. and beat them. Beat them, yeah. Like, come on, like teams get better totally. you know, throughout the year. And, and, and I mean, Nick's already got some tape on you come against on. his team. And yeah. they got a chip. I, got don't a chip. See, I don't see anybody beating them. Correct. What um, Do you think going to Alabama was your toughest environment to play? I mean, you haven't played mm. in the Swamp yet, so this answer is going to change. Right. But, like, what do you think the toughest environment to play in? Whew. 
Auburn at night, Jordan Hare is crazy. LSU Death Valley is crazy. The cowbells yeah, in Starkville, they, Mississippi yeah. is the most obnoxious and annoying sound that you can hear. And uh, the egg bowl, man. The egg bowl, bro. Like they don't cheer loud during the game. All they do is they have the 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 noise enhancers of the cowbells. You know, it's not loud when they cheer. It's just loud because they ring the cowbells. Yeah. Uh, but there's, I mean, SEC, man. Like it's every every week. Every week. Yeah. And you, you could even bring up College Station. Yeah. Uh, Texas A and M. Twelfth man. You know where they just have all. They have like a million chants that they just do throughout the game. And you're like, how do these people remember all these chants? But you know, there's a lot of hostile environments and, uh, you know, places that I've dreamed of playing in. And I've, I've loved playing in, in those environments and winning in those environments. I mean, that's the best feeling that you can get. Yeah. Dude, the Egg Bowl win. Oh, I yeah. Mean, Gritty. 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 And that video that y'all made <laughs> yeah. after, that was such a great video. Yeah. I can't wait to have to reenact that one, man. And that, that goes back to Lane. What a player's coach, man. I know it. I know. I think that, you know, sometimes you you do things with him because he's the one who's like, like, let's do this. Like, let's try this. Um, you know, for some guys that go out on visits, he's like, all right, like, let's do this. Like, let's start controversy. Yeah. You see him when he goes to um, recruit kids in the portal. He's like taking pictures in front of like other schools and whatnot, just to like, you know, be a troll and whatnot. But he absolutely is a player's coach. And, you know, we all love playing for him. And um, at the end of the day, you know, with all that being said, you know, he's a winner and, uh, you know, that matters most to him. And uh, I think that's something that as players, we can all get behind him and, and really uh, buy into what he does. Yeah. Lane, love that guy. So tell me about you, man. I mean, when you think about Jackson Dart off the field, I want to talk about you off the field. You've got style, baby. I mean, you have got swag. Every picture that I see of you, you've got the Louis Vuitton on, you got the shell necklace on. I mean, you're, you're always swagged out. Like, where does that come from? Where does that style come from? It starts with my parents. My okay. mom, she loves fashion. Uh, kind of put it on to my dad. And my dad, I mean, he's, he's getting older up there, but you know, he's got, he's got drip. For yeah. all these, he's got drip. So, I love that, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, he's a sneakerhead like I am, um, and I've just fallen in love with just fashion and, and different trends that yeah. people bring out and, you know, just putting pieces together that are unique and, and whatnot. So, uh, you know, going into our we have the Walk of Champions before every game. Um, I have my fits pre-selected before the season ever starts, so I have it week by week of, you know, the home games that okay. we have. Who picks the fits? Me. Nice. I do. Yeah. I mean, my mom will help me, um, but no, I definitely, I pick it out yeah. and I have it, I have it ready to roll. You've got to, man. I mean, if you're the starting QB <laughs> for the Ole Miss Rebels, I mean, they have a great social media team. I mean, yes. you've got to make sure you, you're looking good. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to, I mean, you want to look good. You want to yeah. play good. You want to feel good. If you look, if you go out there and you have no swag, how I am, I'm not going to like look at a hundred thousand people and feel like. Like, all right, like, I'm that guy. Like, Listen, if you look good. Say it. You feel good. Come on, one more time. If you feel good, you, you play, play good. good. If you play, play good, good, they pay good. Let's go, man. <laughs> I knew you'd like that. Yeah, that's a big one. I like that. But that's cool, man. I mean, you can tell every week by week. I mean, you, you care about your presence, which I'm sure everybody respects, but the, the fashion hustle is, I mean, it's great. Well, I appreciate it. I get a lot of heat from some of my teammates because, you know, in the South, I feel like it doesn't really have as, like the fashion trend is not really the same as like the yeah. West Coast and whatnot. So, you know, my offensive linemen who are from small towns are like, bro, what are you wearing? I'm like, dude, like, what are you wearing? <laughs> Don't worry about me. Don't worry what about me. What are you me. wearing? What are you wearing? Uh, but yeah, I mean, fashion, it, it's another thing that brings people together and it's, it's something that's fun. And um, I think it kind of brings out you know, people's creativity and um, you can have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. I want to do a, um, a segment on the show and it's called The Biggest Gamble. All right. So, and we talk about it all the time on this show. I mean, farmers, ranchers, right. conservationists, every single day they take gambles, right? right? Farmers especially. I mean, what am I going to grow this year? When am I going to grow it? Where am I going to grow it? 
you know, they t every single day there's a gamble to be had. Right. What do you think in life has been the biggest gamble you've ever taken? Hmm. I mean, last night, you know, we're playing a pool game and it's going to be, you know, me and you who's going to host each other on the hunt. <laughs> tell That's the people who won. Tell the people who won. Jackson beat me in pool. And that means I owe him a hunt down in Florida. We're going to go kill an Osceola. So, yeah, Jackson won. I let him win. Yes, I know, but no, he didn't. won. But No, in all seriousness, yeah. um, hmm. That's a tough question. I mean, I can say an obvious one of, of going to, you know, Mississippi yeah. and, and, you know, starting a new life after being, you know, close to home at USC is, was a big gamble. Um, you know, it's not an easy place to get to for my family. Um, and I think it taught me a lot of, you know, truly being independent and learning, you know, who I am. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of things you got to figure out as a college athlete nowadays. Um, there's a lot of things involved. There's a lot of people that are, you know, nagging at you for this and for that. It's a different day and age. It is. And, uh, you know, at times it can be really hard when you don't have, you know, your folks right there with you, your family right there with you. Um, but, I mean, that was, a, you know, my transition. I mean, it wasn't easy. Um, but, you know, I think that it's a gamble that's definitely paid off. Um, there was a lot of questions, you know, when I first went there of, you know, is it, was this the right move? Is yeah. this the right move? And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you got to fall in love with the process of, of what your, what your purpose is and, and where you want to be in life. Yeah. And, you know, regardless of, you know, adverse situations that you may face, um, you got to stay, you got to stay the course and it's definitely paid off. But I mean, quite honestly, like that was a really big, that was a really big gamble Absolutely. for me and, and I mean, my what's, family. What do you think the biggest gamble you've taken since going to Ole Miss? I'd probably say having to like decipher like your time of the people that you surround yourself with. Um, you know, there's, you know, you have a lot of friends that you leave um, from moving places. Yep. Uh, you have a lot of close family members. And, uh, you know, when you have a big crowd of people that you're supposed to, you know, take care of. Yep. Um, and, and people who, you know, were your friends back then, um, who might not be matching your same intents yep. nowadays. Um, I think having to gamble with like who you who are, who are the close people in your circle versus who are, you know, the ones that are kind of back and forth. Yeah. That's um, a great point. I think that can be a gamble that a lot of people get caught up in. And I think that you see a lot of athletes all the time who are made out to do something incredible and they have all the talents in the world, but they get caught up in distractions. And a lot of it is because of who you surround yourself with. Yep. And I think me having, you know, maturity and, and realizing that, um, you know, it's, it's okay. Like you're not responsible for everybody's happiness. Yeah, it's a great point. And like we talked about, this is a different age in college football, like especially with NIL. Right. I mean, how do you navigate the NIL? Because, you know, and like we've talked about it a lot, like you are your own brand and you're very specific, which I love about you, on what brands you want to associate yourself with. Right. And I'm honored that like you're like a farmer's one of them, but like how are you navigating NIL right now? Fortunately, I have a lot of help. You do. We've got our boy. I mean, we've got a mutual friend, T. Yep. Love T. Shout out T for sure. Absolutely. You know, uh, you know, having those people who um, are there for my best interest. Yeah. Um, people who have had a ton of experience in this field and being able to navigate you through it has definitely been a huge benefit to me. Um, you know, it's it's definitely tough when you know you have an opportunity like this that can be. Um, really good right now in your life but you know for me i'm looking for you know i'm looking for relationships and, yep. and genuine friendships that yep. i can carry on for a long term um you know, just a long-term relationship instead of just short term uh so there's a lot of things you have to look into with that stuff but um fortunately like i said for me i have you know our mutual friend c and yeah and, and my parents who do a great job of, of helping me navigate through it 
So you talk about these brand partnerships that you've been associating yourself with. And like I mentioned, you do great job choosing who you want to associate with. And, and I admire, that might be one of the most things I admire about you is, you know, how you present yourself and who you associate yourself with. One big one, Realtree. Yep. Love those guys. Tell me how that even came about. Yeah, it was really just my, one of my first interactions when I got to Ole Miss, uh, meeting Tyler and the Jordan family. Um, you know, you could feel their, their generosity and, and their genuine care for the program and, and what they stand on was something that I really, um, you know, felt like I wanted to be a part of. Um, they do a great job with what they do and obviously they're a huge brand and, and great people and I just want to surround myself with great people. So, uh, you know, you got the hoodie on today. Yeah. Um, you know, shout out to Tyler and those guys for, you know, getting your height. And, yep. Um, but yeah, you know, those guys are great and, uh, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed our relationship and, and uh, look forward for what's next. That's awesome. One more thing, Super Bowl this year, who's in it, who's winning it? We're going to go Bills Mafia. Okay, now we're talking. We All got right. Josh. Yep. I'm not just saying this because, you know. Yeah. And I got them and I got the 49ers. I got the 49ers going out on top. You had to choose a team to go to in the NFL. Yeah. Who would it be? And your answer, first of all, is going to be like, look, I'm going to be honored and blessed and appreciative 100%. for whoever picks me. But yeah, that's a tough question. It's honestly one that I've thought about a lot. Yeah. Uh, growing up in Utah, there's not like a close NFL team to me. So yeah, who are always, you cheering for? I was always cheering for players. Yeah. It really wasn't teams. I mean, I at one time I did choose the Jaguars as my favorite team. And the reason was because I wanted to pick a team who – regardless of if they were going to be good eventually, that I would not be a bandwagon. So I had to decide over the Miami Dolphins or the Jacksonville Jaguars, who at that time were the two worst teams in the NFL. Yep. Ended up picking the Jaguars, so I guess okay. like that's my team now. There you go. Um, but, I mean, honestly, I, I kind of look at it as, you know, living in Texas or living in Florida, um, you know, places who don't have income taxes or, you there know. You Low income tax like that. Hey. I mean, that would be a great place to play. Stand on your business, man. Come on. I respect it. We're going to do one more segment. It's called This or That. Okay. okay? I'm going to ask you a this or that question, and then you ask me one. Like I mentioned, I have a great team back home, and I, I think I know everything about Jackson Dart. Mm. You're a big reality TV show fan. Mm. Bachelor. I mean, you love The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. Are you going Love Island? Mm. Or Bachelor, which one are you choosing? Bachelor. Bachelor. There's too much stuff going on in Love Island. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like Love Island's more fake than uh, The Bachelor, so I'm gonna, go I'm gonna say Bachelor because I feel like that's more. I could see you maybe more. after football, you know, if, if you aren't with anybody, I could see you maybe joining that show one day. Yeah, you know, I got a great girlfriend right now, so. Yo. <laughs> there you go. Right now. I respect that. Yeah. All right, you go. Ask me one. All right. Uh, let's go with Italian food or Mexican food. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going Mexican food though, man. I love spicy food. I love tacos. I love quesadillas. I love burritos. I love nachos. I mean, I love Mexican food. All right. What's your favorite, like? If you're going to a Mexican restaurant right now, like what's your order? Oh, um, I'm gonna start off with chips and salsa, but I want the cheese dip with the beef, 100%. And then I'm gonna go a chicken, cheese, jalapeno quesadilla with a margarita baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Um, Jackson, I loved having you on the show today, man. Uh, I truly look at you as a friend. I was fortunate enough to get to hang out with you for a couple of days. We got to hunt. I mean, you talk about spending quality time with somebody. No doubt. Duck hunting. You got guns in there. You're blasting birds. You're freezing our tails off. I mean, it was so cold this morning. But I've had the time of my life being out here to spend time with you. I mean, these relationships that I've been able to make, you know, over these this past night and this morning are some that – I never thought that I would be able to make, and um, you know, I'm really fortunate for and grateful for you guys for bringing me along, and um, you know, look forward to the future because I feel like it's going to be a great one. Look forward to seeing you Saturday, December 30th, after the game in Hotlanta.
Yeah. After a big win, I'll be there, man. I'll be cheering you on. Ole Miss QB Jackson Dart coming on the show, the last show of season one of Like a Farmer. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, not only this episode, but for the whole season. We've got some great stuff coming to you season two. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe to Like a Farmer. We'll see you all next time.